All right, we're in. Did you hear that, Mevo? Hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Network. Uh, we are at the, we're on the on the final stretch of the Evergreen Tattoo Invitational. My name is Jake. This is Nate Laugh of Rev Twenty Three. We're going to talk about where that name came from. I already know. Okay. But they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. It's not a very interesting story, <laughs> really. But uh, well, it's kind of interesting because because you, you so when. Whenever I was first introduced to you, it was Tattoo Management Studio, yes. right? Which makes a lot more sense with the industry. Yeah. But then you just pulled a U-turn and went... Went, went full on <laughs> Rev23. Full on so. Rev23. So Rev23 was was like a donate, domain name you already owned or something. Yeah, it was, right? it was a band that I was in back in, <laughs> right. back in the early 20s. I was a, <laughs> That's awesome. I was a lead guitarist for a metal band in, in Denver, Colorado. Um, we needed to change our name real quick, and uh, we decided... Like after after a little bit of deliberation, is like, like what's the last revelation in the Bible, man? Twenty two, <laughs> oh. all right, it's twenty three, <laughs> nice. and wrote it down. It's like all right, so we alternated between like Revelation twenty three and Rev twenty three, but we we bought the domain name, which back then were like you know a couple hundred bucks, a hundred oh, bucks yeah. at least, not ninety nine cents like they are now. Yeah. So I kept it, and we broke up. You know, eventually, like things do, but I kept it, and. Um, once I got into software development stuff, I needed somewhere to upload uh, just the code I was working on. And just, just it hung around, yeah. And then what became Rev23, the tattoo stuff, um, it was just terrible marketing on my part. I, <laughs> yeah. I turned, it was really bad. It was Rev23 <laughs> Development was the company, and then Tattoo Management Studio was the product. Right. Which was a play on, you know, it's a database-driven you know application, so... Yeah. SQL Server Management Studio is, is a product from Microsoft. So I was like, all right, I need the word management and studio, so tattoo uh, management studio. Yeah. And I figured people would get the Rev23 is the company, like Microsoft, and yeah. then tattoo management studio is the software. You gave and, them too much uh, credit. Yeah, there was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. was way too many words. Yeah. 17 too many t syllables. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we, we've, we've fa we fought that same battle from the yeah. fireside tats, and then everybody, uh, like, the first time... Uh, you, anyone hears the word tat, they're like, oh, I want nothing to do with yeah. anything you're doing. I'm like, yeah, but it's a play, it's tongue in cheek, it's yeah. play on words. And finally, we got rid of it. And then, uh, and then Tattoo Improvement Network, and now Fireside Tattoo Network. We like to bounce around too, so it's, we're you're in good company. Yeah, so yeah, everybody, <laughs> well, everybody would call it the wrong thing. It was like Tattoo yeah. Software Management Studio, Tattoo <laughs> right. Studio Management, and nobody got yeah. it right. Uh, there were a good number of people that just called it Rev23, and yeah. finally it was time last year to just, just after to after eight years of that name, it yeah. was, or I was seven at the time, just like, all right, double down on Rev23 and just let it fly. So yeah. I, th I think it's going well. People. So, so for people who don't know what you do, what is Rev23? All right, Rev23 is a software uh, package for Windows PC. Um, it's you know designed to kind of just improve the workflow of a tattoo shop. So appointment scheduling, deposit tracking, uh, paperless release forms, it's got a point of sale in there with like integrated credit card processing, uh, inventory control, pretty much everything you need to, to kind of just you know get the shop nice, well, and organized. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I Russ Abbott first introduced it to me. Uh, I was I was I don't know if we were podcasting at Ink and Dagger or I was tattooing down there or something, and and um, uh, he had I think we were podcasting because he had made a list of of. Um, of some inks that he had used on a particular tattoo, this big piece he was working on, and he had handed it to his shop manager to input so that he would know what he was using the next time. I was like, oh, what are you using to, you have like a system that keeps up with your inks? And he was like, yeah, I'll just put it in the notes of whatever that's attached to this person in this tattoo management studio. And so I downloaded, I went straight home and downloaded a free trial of it. Of course, I'm a one-person studio, and I, 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 I did the free trial and realized like, well, this is about, like. It's a, a bit overwhelming it's a little for bit, a solo <laughs> It's guy. a lot for yeah. one person. Um, but you know now, I mean, we were just talking the other day about it, ab about being able to, um, or, or, or the possibility of, of tapering it down for someone like me because I am paying Square Scheduler thirty or forty bucks a month just to handle my schedule. I'm paying QuickBooks every single month. I'm I have all these separate things that have to work together, and so then you start going, well, like, do I necessarily have to use everything in Rev twenty three, or could I just no, use yeah, part you of it? You can kind of just componentize it and you, you yeah. know, use the pieces that you need. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, it, I've got plenty of one-man bands that do, yeah. you know, everything. But, yeah, I've got some, some stuff in the works that I think is going to be especially targeted to people in that situation. Yeah. But. 
Do, um, do you find that the, the has that been a demand? I mean, have you noticed that people are like, oh, it's, it's awesome, it's more than I need? I think I'm seeing a trend of people that, you know, the, I think the bigger shops, especially the guys that have uh, – multiple studios like just almost enterprise type stuff yeah i'm seeing less of those kind of things open up and it's going more to private studio stuff where it's the artist kind of mm -hmm. just dealing with themselves mm -hmm. um so there they're, i've seen the trend there and I'm going to respond to that the, yeah, the way yeah. that it needs to any uh, I any idea what i mean what that looks like is it something you're already working on it's, it's it's, it's, it's all right it's there. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know it's got to happen, and yeah, that's the plan. I'm working on a new version of Rev23 Desktop, which is the uh, the PC version um, of the software, and that was kind of one of the other reasons we did it was I wanted to differentiate uh, Tattoo Management Studio when, when we named it. It's like, all right, let's call Rev23 Desktop the, you know, that's the PC version as it's, you know, it's running on the Windows desktop, and then um, you know, Rev23 whatever comes after that is going to be kind of the cloud-based stuff. So gotcha. wanted wanted a bit of a differentiator there. Yeah, yeah. So what has made it, what's kept it Windows-based so uh, far? You know, Mac is awesome for media, media consumption yeah. and creation. Um, Windows is great for business software. Yeah. Um, you know, they're back, especially back in the day, uh, if you look at the reviews for like QuickBooks for Mac, like you go to Amazon, look at QuickBooks for Mac reviews, and it was all like, I, I just, this is terrible. I had to buy yeah. a PC just to run QuickBooks. So, you know, somebody like Intuit who has billions of dollars behind him, if they yeah. couldn't get it right, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> one dude. It's a real uphill I, battle I, for I, you. I, right? I taught myself how to code in my parents' basement when I was 12 years old. So, yeah, yeah that's. Uh, so so go back to how did you end up choosing the, the tattoo industry to, to design tattoo. this for? I had a, a buddy that was a tattoo artist and. Yeah. You know, I, I would go into a shop and he'd tattoo me and I would just kind of see, uh, you know, that's what programmers do is we kind of look at problems. It's like, okay, what, what can we solve here? So there was especially stuff, uh, it was, you know, I, actually it kind of started as not software, but um, something that Icon ended up doing later, which was time tracking on the tattoo machine. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so he had, he had this idea to do, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. all right, let's track how long this machine's actually on. We ditched that, but I saw the need for other stuff as I was in the shop talking to him about that all the time. Uh, and it's like, you know, every time I'm in here, you take my ID, you do a release form. It's like, well, we, we, can, we can simplify this. I'm looking at the back of my ID. It's like, there's data on here. There's a barcode. There's a swipe. I bet there's stuff on here. Yeah. Swiped it. And it's like, yeah, there's, there's stuff. Yeah. So it's like everything you need for a release form is right on that ID. Let's make this instant. And mm. bam. So started working on that um, and just kind of started seeing the problems. And then kind of veered off from there yeah i am um, you know i always i always loved this industry um I, f I feel like i was supposed to be a tattoo artist um yeah you know back back when i was a kid especially i was everybody's like oh nate's an amazing artist and i you know i was always drawing and anytime uh, in school i could flip over i would do my schoolwork and i'd flip over the page and start Just sketching drawn. stuff yeah and ev every single parent teacher conference you know, they're like you know, Nate would be—he'd be a really good student if he spent more time on the front of the paper than he did the, the, <laughs> right. the back of the paper. Yeah. But then, around 12, I just kind of peaked out, and I never really got better as an artist. So, I draw something now. It looks like a kind of awesome 12-year-old drew it. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. It's about as, as far as I was able to go. Yeah. Uh, but I was able to find something—you know—to take bring what I'm able to do and bring it to an industry that I love and wanted to be a part of. So. Yeah. And and and. I'm sure you know this probably as well as anyone. It's 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 amazing how supportive tattooers are of like entrepreneurs that are genuinely invested in tattooing. Yeah, you ha you have to be genuine about it. Yeah, um, and that's uh, one of the things I've definitely known. You know, I've been doing this for. I started it ten years ago. I released the first version March first of two thousand and ten. So it's been around just just oh. over eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, every, you know, people will ask sometimes, like, hey, wh how'd you get there, just like we did here? And, um, you know, I tell them, and I think people see, like, oh, yeah, okay, he's, he at least, w I'm not in this for the money. There's, let's, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, right. there's, it's, it's, Rev 23 is, is a, is a passion of love over the dollars, so. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it's, yeah, it. it it obviously is working because I can't tell you how many people I've heard. Well, we just had Tommy Altman on yesterday, and he gave you guys a shout out. He about how we were talking about 
we actually talked a bit about uh, Brandon Williams went and helped uh, the, helped oh, okay. them out a little bit, and he was and he mentioned how much Rev Twenty Three did to help uh, help his business uh, uh, just to just to start tracking what they were actually doing and doing well and not doing well. And then you know the first time that we met like, when we met at Impact last year, I I, I didn't know um, I had never heard of Rev Twenty Three. I'd heard of Tattoo Management mm-hmm. Studio, and then I see you know every, people are asking for photo ops and stuff like that, and I, so I'm walking up to you asking for photo ops, and I'm like, Who, I don't know that guy. Who is he? They're like, oh, he developed our software. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was that was weird. I've never been in that. But it's like, who, you want a picture with me? With it? No. Is Nick Baxter standing behind me? No. It's, oh, you, me? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, that was a little weird. Well, I, mean, um, I mean, but look at that. That's pretty impressive that they're like, oh, God. You're like, they thought enough of you. You know, you're at a tattoo convention as a software developer. Yeah, and people are like, ah, oh, you changed our whole shop. People still do. I, I, people ask me for photos in, in uh, my booth quite often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I, awesome. I don't know why you wouldn't want a picture with this face, <laughs> but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you see, if anything? I mean, as, is the future just kind of a, continuing to, to recognize the, the the incremental changes that need to be made to it? Do you see it? Try, do, you, or do you have any goals of, like, taking over the tattoo industry from a technology standpoint that's or the what plan yeah a lot of um you know a lot of the stuff that's out there you know if you start if you start getting on the google machine and, and type in you know tattoo management software or whatever yeah. or you know tattoo studio software what you're going to find is salon software and they take right. salon software they change the logo they change the name and they slap it up there and it's <laughs> I, I don't i really don't like that as just you know yeah. a person who respects this industry and I think a lot of people don't know that that's the case. I think yeah. once they realize, like, wait, my software that I use now is salon software. Mm-hmm. And I think you'll, you know, if they start to recognize it once they look for the for the clues. Yeah. But, you know. What, what would be a couple of big differences in salon software and, and Rev23? So, release forms is one. You know, yeah. the, a salon doesn't have any concept of release forms. They don't have any concept of deposits. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no, um, there's no real uh, differentiator and like how commissions are done. Like I, I do a lot of uh, advanced commission tracking where, mm-hmm. you know, if they've got a big shop, they can do like uh, the people call them sliding scale commissions. Yeah. Uh, where, if, you know, okay, you do zero to $2,000, you get 55%. You go above $2,000, you get 60%. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it does a lot of incentive based stuff like that. Gotcha. Uh, so it's very just industry specific stuff, especially mm-hmm. in the inventory tracking of like uh, jewelry. Like I get very, uh, specific on the piercing side. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I hadn't even that was something I hadn't even thought of because I have, uh, was was dealing with with piercing. Um, one thing that um, uh, that I've heard people say when they're when they're talking about you is that how uh, how you're able to or you're willing to like uh, uh, to to tweak something in one way or another. Like your customer service is really top notch because you work with almost everyone individually. Is that something you can continue to do going yeah, forward? Or yeah, what trying? I do, um, you know, I, do, I don't make really super specific changes to the software. Like I have to kind of vet it as far as, okay, somebody yeah. wants this. Does this serve the greater good or is this something yeah. super isolated to what you do? Yeah. Um, and in, in that case, it's kind of harder for me to justify the time cost. And But, right. yeah, the, the software has been essentially built by the industry. Um, yeah. Everybody telling me this is what we need rather than me telling you this is what you need. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I get a lot of good feedback. I've got a lot of awesome users that, that just are passionate about it, uh, like you were saying. Yeah. Um, that just want to see it as the best that it can be and that's that's what i'm always striving to do it's it's my baby um yeah you know, i i started coding it about 10 years ago yeah um do um uh oh, i lost my train of thought right there for a second um do you uh how many people use it or how many shops are or is it in right now do you have any idea somewhere in the 300s okay i would say maybe so maybe maybe just shy of 300 um some people come some people go and you know it's, it's yeah. not it's not like i said it's not for everybody they'll somebody yeah. will come find it and be like yeah okay we'll try it out for a little bit and they maybe do a subscription for a while mm. it's like mm, okay this uh, this doesn't suit exactly what i need maybe they're yeah. they're in a private studio they're just one guy yeah so yeah, yeah. um so there's uh, so there's plenty of room i mean uh, there's plenty of room to grow do you have any idea of how you might scale it if if it if you do find that you know you go from 300 to a thousand yeah or, or five thousand oh yeah <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, what, it, what i really love about what i do is being able to talk to everybody mm-hmm. you know I, I kind of have a personal relationship with and it's it's become uh 
somewhat difficult to track at this point. Yeah. You know, back so backtracking slightly. Uh, back in 2012, Rev 23 was acquired by Painful Pleasures. Oh, okay. um, they, so you know, I, I built this. I had a relationship with them because they had this running in two of their shops, and they um, they wanted to help me build it the best that I could. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think what they really wanted was to see it not go away, uh, because yeah. a lot of things have popped up in the recent years, especially. I think as tattooing has really started to, to become part of popular culture in general. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the vultures see it and it's like, oh, money. Yeah. Uh, so they start sniffing it out. But, you know, there's uh, I, back to the genuine stuff. I think I think people can sniff the, yeah. you know, it's like this isn't this is just some guy looking for money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas I'm, I'm trying to make the industry better. Um, so, you know, Painful Pleasures wanted that to not go away because a lot of them do they, they pop up and then it's like oh there's no money here and they disappear uh there's overhead there's there's stuff that you've got to pay for that um you know cost money yeah so to make to make sure it didn't disappear they they kind of they took rev 23 as the company over they they kind of brought me into that that uh company which mm -hmm. I, I love painful pleasures everybody there is awesome yeah um so they've been they've been really good to me. Well, um, what size company are they? What are they? I don't know where they're at now. Actually, they're you know they're out in Hanover, Maryland. Um, okay. you know, the industry supplier out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're less than fifty. Um, okay. Yeah, they've got a gigantic warehouse though. It's, huh. it's quite impressive what what they've got. Yeah. Um, so are you still so as far as creative control and stuff like that? You're still making most of the decisions yeah. as far as how the software. Yeah. What happens within the programs the program itself yeah that's that's all still me just talking directly to yeah. um the, you know my users yeah. um so back when they first uh, got you know everything it's like let's try to streamline this as much as we can mm -hmm. um they let me just kind of focus on the development side and then the support you know the tech support side went on to uh we hired somebody to to deal with that yeah and unfortunately somebody poached her from me at a party they, somebody said eh, what do you do and she said <laughs> she told them and they offered her a job that i couldn't match uh, yeah, okay we lost her uh, so it went back to me but in the th maybe three years that we had her it I really kind of missed the connection that I had with users. So it, yeah. it kind of was a blessing in disguise there where it's, I got to come back into the fold and start doing conventions and stuff again Yeah, uh, and really start connecting with people. So while it seemed like a good idea at the time to let me have a buffer, yeah. um, I never, I never wanted to be the face of Rev 23. I'm just, yeah. I'm kind of socially awkward. I don't know if you've, we, we, we get along well. Yeah, but, I've, I've yeah. noticed that. But yes. <laughs> uh. um, it, it was not, I was, it wasn't, I wasn't intended to be the salesperson for this ever. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a software developer, and usually they they lock guys like me in a, in a dark room, yeah, and right. we don't see the light of day. But yeah. in this case, there's nobody that can do it like I can, uh, and that has the passion for it like I do. So I, I go talk, and work works out well. Yeah. So as of now, there's no plan to replace her. You're, no. you're going to keep this. Role. No. Go. Yeah. I, I kind of do email support only. Um, yeah. Send me an email first, and then I respond. And if if it's something where it's, you know, this is going to be easier for me to get on the phone, I hop on the phone and kind of start yeah. building connections that way. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I try, to, I try to funnel in as much as I can through email because I've always got my phone. I've always got something. And it's like, oh, yeah, all right, that's how you fix that. Bam, go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Much faster than waiting for me to, to hop on the phone. Yeah. So if, so, if, if, if someone's interested in, in checking it out, you guys, do you do – trials yeah there's, still? There, yeah there's a 14 day free trial which is yeah. uh, a bit of an arbitrary number um sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, usually it's 30 I, I, because like you said so, sometimes you get in there and it's like this is a little overwhelming for me like yeah I, I, I try to give them a timeline of like this is this is how much i i want you to try to learn as much as you can in this period instead of i'll do a little bit here a little bit here i really yeah. try to focus in on like look take the time to learn it so you can see how much it will automate your process, yeah. uh, and then I feel like that's where it really clicks for them. Like, okay, yeah, this yeah. this is going to work for me. So, yeah. is there uh, maybe it already exists? Was there any chance of, of of it going mobile, of being able to use a, a mobile app to that's do? That's the that's, plan. That's the yeah. plan coming forward. Yep. Yeah, that's that's obviously where it not you yeah. know this industry's headed. You, you come yeah. to a to a tattoo convention now, which you know back back when I started, the iPhone didn't even exist when right. I first started writing the code for this thing. Yeah, uh, it was you know Windows kind of dominated and. Mm -hmm. That, that was about it uh, and then I released and then 
right right somewhere in middle development that's when the iphone came out uh, i was like what is this thing is right. and, then, and then suddenly you know 99 cent apps uh uh kind of surged the market and people were yeah. like i'm thousand dollars for software what do you because that's what it cost at the time was yeah. was you know nine hundred nine ninety nine yeah like uh, 99 cents is what i'm used to paying for software <laughs> right. free with so that kind of kind of yeah. uh, was an interesting paradigm shift <laughs> yeah but that, <laughs> that i had to uh, deal with uh, yeah. but yeah mobile has taken over and you walk around a tattoo convention now and what do you see you see, yeah. you see the ipads yeah um so yeah that's that's obviously the the priority the now yeah. so working on a new version of, of desktop like i was saying where i'm doing chip card support for credit card processing that was a yeah. that was a big thing that i had to get added yeah uh, and once this version's done i'm going to kind of start focusing on uh the mobile side of things and yeah yeah, uh, if uh, rev twenty three dot com is rev twenty three dot com, yeah. do the, the and and you guys uh, it, for you guys who watch the show regularly, you know we don't typically just like product push. We have a mostly we're an art focused podcast, and the reason um, the reason I asked Nate on is because I, I just enough people have come have, have mentioned rev twenty three and what it did for their businesses, and you know we we do you know, we're an art podcast, but we do a lot of business process systems talk uh i enjoy i'm kind of an entrepreneur i enjoy you know uh, uh talking about business and uh and any time that we do i find that your name comes up more than more than anything else <laughs> you know on the <laughs> business side tattoo related uh and especially i love that people who are like let me get photos with my <laughs> i felt it, i mean it, i felt just as ridiculous taking photos with people so i'm glad we were on the <laughs> okay, same page good. there uh but uh but yeah absolutely check check nate out uh he's de- definitely dedicated to the industry i can i can tell you that firsthand and uh if i had a bigger shop i would already be subscribed to rev 23 and when you come up with something that is good for a one-person shop i'll be a, i'll, let you, I'll, let I'll you be a customer it. you can yeah you i'd can, love to yeah. i'd love to get your feedback on it first awesome so. man thanks so much for taking the time thanks, buddy Appreciate yeah man it. thank you guys as always we'll see you next time